Hey everybody, welcome back to the second episode of We Actually Watched. Again, my name is Steve. This is Jessica. Hi! Representing GirlOnGeek.com. And today we watched a movie that I wasn't even sure existed until I downloaded it. Because I... <laughs> How okay. did you know it existed to download? I Well, okay. The movie we watched is the Tekken movie. And 2010. It's a, 2010. Yes. And there's another Tekken movie in the late 90s that was an animated movie. And I had vague memories that that existed. Yeah. And I had no memory that they actually made a live action Tekken movie. So yes. I did not know this, this movie, this version of it existed. Right. So Tekken is set in a dystopian future where all the governments of the world have fallen and the whole world is run by corporations. Now Tekken itself is the name of one of these corporations and apparently they sponsor an annual tournament called the King of the Iron Fist. Not to be confused with the movie that came out with Russell Crowe. And the movie itself tells the story of Jin, who's this young Asian hood rat who lives in a territory run by the Tekken group and he spends his time stealing things for underground rebel groups who are doing some kind of hacking scheme thing to, you know, to fight the man, which is the Tekken Corporation. They get assaulted and attacked by soldiers of the Tekken group. Meanwhile, Jin is out, luckily escapes harm, but his mom isn't so lucky. You know, his mom's house gets blown up by a rocket launcher, which seems to be a common theme <laughs> in these fighting game movies. A lot of rocket launchers blowing up huts. So that really bums out Jin. So to get revenge, he proceeds to enter the tournament so he could have a chance to take out the head of the Tekken Corporation, which is run by an old, crazy-looking man named Mishima. Do you want to say anything about his hair? <laughs> it's kind of like Dilbert's boss in the comic strip. It's like Mr. Miyagi, <laughs> but with little horns at yeah. the end. Yeah, it kind of does look like that. So anyway, Jin, he answers an open casting call, basically, and he beats up martial law, who is played by Kung Lee, who's an actual kickboxing legend and UFC star, shout out to Kung Lee. And when Jin fights, mm -hmm. every time he's getting beaten, he has the power to summon a flashback of his mother training him, which motivates him to get mad and make a comeback. And most of the time he wins the fight. Yes, the actress needed screen time mm -hmm. for the amount she was being paid for. So he enters the tournament and we're introduced to the other fighters participating who are a bunch of familiar faces from the series. You have all your favorites, Brian Fury. You got Anna and Nina, the sisters. You have Christy, Eddie Gordo, Raven, Sergei, and Miguel, and everyone's favorite, Yoshimitsu. <laughs> so the tournament starts, people beat each other up. Jin, being mentored by ex-Tekken uh, veteran Steve Fox, beats up Miguel, and somewhere along the line, the evil Kazuya, who's the head of security for the Tekken Corporation and the son of Mishima, the old man, does some Googling about Jin. Cause he's like, you know, where's this street punk come from? And why is this guy so good? He does his Googling and he realizes that, holy cow, Jin is the son of this lady who was also in the Tekken tournament many years ago. And it turns out Kazuya had hooked up with this lady so it turns out that Kazuya is Jin's son. Yes. I'm sorry. So it turns out that Jin is Kazuya's son. Yes. Which motivates Kazuya to kill him for some reason. So Jin goes clubbing, he's totally hooking up with Christine. Yeah. And that's awesome. And he dances and then he gets almost assassinated by the assassin girls. Kazuya tries to take over control of Tekken group from his dad and kills his dad kills his dad, and it turns the tournament into a deathmatch tournament. But anyway, the tournament continues, Jin is able to beat up Yoshimitsu, then suddenly it's the finals, and Jin fights Brian Fury, who turns out is part cyborg, beats him, Kazuya enters, beats up Kazuya, doesn't kill him, and everyone goes home happy. Jin becomes the Tekken champion. Jin is kind of seen as the uh, the new head of the Tekken Corporation since he's basically blood related to them anyway. And I think that's pretty much how the movie ends. <laughs> I do like how they tried to cast a person of Asian descent 
because I looked him up online and John Fu has Irish and uh, he's Irish and from London so he's got UK blood in him and he's the martial artist and so they tried they gave him the pants with the flame on the one leg and they try to stay true to the video game hair where it's like spiky yeah. in the back but yeah. it's got the long like yeah. things in the front I did think of something that did bother me maybe okay. it's just like a minor thing mm -hmm. They have the Chun-Li moment where the child is a different race <laughs> yeah. when they're young yeah, So true. during his flashback, there's an up-close of Jin's face and he's... I can only describe perhaps a young Spanish descent child of Hispanic origin but yeah. like lighter skinned yeah. Not even white yeah. And then he grew up to be this pretty good looking half white, half Eurasian, like a Eurasian child I was a little disappointed that a couple of my favorite Tekken characters didn't make it into the movie. Paul Phoenix isn't in there. He's the dude from the game with the huge, yeah, the huge flat top. Uh, Kuma the bear didn't make it in. He's a fighting bear. And uh, Moku Jin, which is like basically a wooden dummy. It's essentially a wooden training dummy mm -hmm. that comes to life. So that's, uh, that's very disappointing. There were moments you just didn't need. Jin's father does a declaration in the middle of a threesome, which he could have just stood in front of a window and had rain go down the window, and he could yeah. have made the same declaration. A threesome with the Assassin sisters, Nina and Anna. Yeah. yeah. How's that for your expanded universe, Tekken fans? <laughs> yeah. There is odd moments of just lust that goes out through this movie. I don't know what it is about cinema in general, but when they're intercutting Jin with the blonde hair girl with violence yeah. in his house that's happening to like his mom and what's ha you know the house being burned or whatever, I don't understand why it needs to be intercut. It's like film wants us to be conditioned to only being turned on during violence. Yeah, I was like, wow, I don't know what my body wants to do right now. <laughs> like, I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. As Steve and I discussed during the film, there's always an awesome club dance scene. At least we've seen it twice. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Chen Li in this. Except this time, I've actually seen this type of dancing in clubs, and the pants that Christy wears are like my favorite. Everyone needs to wear pants. Like just straight cut, but it's got a V in the back. <laughs> I like how every time it's a future dystopian, the only sport that survives is always martial arts. Very true. Very good point. Because you don't need anything except your fists, and your guts, and your balls. <laughs> you know? Okay, Jessica. What was your reaction to this movie? It was not as bad as some other video game adapted film movies. This, this one kind of moved along, and since you mentioned earlier some of the actual people in the movie are UFC fighters or they had martial arts training background, the boy John Fu that plays Jin, he's, he's a martial artist. Mm -hmm. You know, at least they tried and they make it look real. I did appreciate that they went and just straight up casted a lot of experienced martial artists and martial artist actors. Yes. And even, you know, UFC fighters and stuff. So all the action looked pretty good. Unlike the reverse case where in Legend of Chun-Li, they just tried to get actors and then just threw them into action scenes with, you know, traditional, like, trying to edit around. And even then, that didn't really work out since they still just ended up with actors like Chris Klein, you know, <laughs> who was awful. So it's like, you might as well just cast a really talented martial artist and have him try to act his way through it. Yes. Then try to cast an actor and have him try to fight his way through it. Yeah, I, I agree. I didn't think it was that bad. From what little I know of Tekken, it's pretty true to the storyline of Tekken. And it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't try to be anything it's not. Yes. You know, yeah. unlike, you know, another movie we just saw, you know, Legend of Chun-Li, which just took characters, lift them out, and try to make a new story around it. This yes. was just, hey, take in the game, blah, take in the movie. Yes. Just took the controller out of your hand and just let you sit back. It was 2010, so maybe they, they learned after the other Street Fighter movies or Mortal mm. Kombat movies. That's they true. watched. This yeah. director was like, I know, I know where not to go. Yeah, it's not perfect. I mean, the acting is a little corny, and uh, the story seems to move at a really fast clip. Like, it just went from Jin beating up people to all of a sudden, oh, it's the finals, and you don't really see anything that happens to any of the other fighters in the, in the story. So, 
If you had to grade this movie, elementary school style, from F to A+, okay. where would Tekken, the 2010 movie, fall? B minus. Oh. Like a C plus B minus if graded on the curve. Uh -huh. And then later on you had to talk to your professor yeah. to see if you could raise your grade. Yeah. So right there. That's the sweet spot. You're right. You would have to grade this on a curve. A curve <laughs> of video game adaptation movies. And there is a curve for that. Yeah. Because if it wasn't for that curve and this movie just came out of the void, not based on anything, it was just like, blah, this is called Tekken. <laughs> You'd be like, well, this is a little corny. D minus. But, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, D with the curve. Yeah, I was going to give it a C plus, which I consider very good for this kind of movie because that's that's passing yeah. flying colors. Yeah. But I have to knock it down to a regular C because they didn't have Paul Phoenix or Kuma the Bear. Maybe the hair would have been not realistic, like exactly. too ridiculous. Yeah, it would have they just been have done it. way too much CGI to get that hair right. They already went pretty far trying to cast ethnic correct roles. They, they can't go one step further and do the hair now. It's too That's much too much, it's stretching just it. just too much, yeah. They're trying to keep it realistic. Like, <laughs> this is the dark night of Tekken movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the kind of movie, if it was ever playing late night on cable for free, I wouldn't say turn it off. I'd say sit there and you'd probably be a little entertained. The problem is, I don't think this movie is gonna be playing anywhere. And it's almost kind of a shame because it's really not too bad. There are definitely worse movies oh, yeah. out there yeah. by far, adaptation or not. Kind of a shame, you know? They didn't do too bad a job, but no one's gonna care <laughs> until we tell them to. I wouldn't say pay for it, yep. but you know, if you ever stumble across it anywhere or wanna download it out of curiosity, not a total waste of your time. Thank you guys for watching the second episode of We Actually Watched. My name is Steve. This is Jessica. Hi! Thank you guys. See you next time.